Hey guys, what's happening? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and in this video, I'm gonna go over just the basic setup for the Sony RX100 6, okay? Now, this is for particularly for people new to Sony cameras, okay? I'm just gonna go over how to use the camera. You just bought it and you wanna use it, and you know, you wanna get the best possible quality and you wanna know what the features are that matter and things like that. Now, the camera is so complicated and complex, however, the video would be hours long if I went into every single feature. So I'm just gonna go do a basic overview, you know, so you can get out there. You know, it's like the first day you got it, you wanna get out there and start shooting. So I'm gonna go over the basic concepts of the camera, okay? But this is what I wanted to show you if when you want more information, like when you really wanna dive in deep and start using some of the more advanced features. Just go to my YouTube channel right here. And if you scroll down, you'll see here on the top, well, first be sure to subscribe here and check that little notification icon. And then just scroll down, you'll see I have all the latest uploads are always on the top. So the latest videos will be up here, okay? So that's good to know. And then all the Sony camera reviews are here. All the Sony lens reviews are here. And then I got just some random testing stuff, which, you know, it can vary depending on what piece of equipment I have. But right here, Sony how-to videos. If you click on that, this will bring you into the how-tos. And I did an extensive how-to campaign with the Sony RX10 Mark IV. Now that camera menu system is exactly the same as the RX100 menu system, okay? Particularly when it comes to recording video, drive mode, self-timer, bracket settings. See, the cool thing about the Sony cameras is the menu system is basically the same for every single camera. So it doesn't really matter what camera you have. You can watch these videos and they will apply, like they will be applicable to whatever Sony camera you might have. So I just wanted to make you guys aware of that. You know, you want to know more, fo all the focus features, all this stuff, click on that video. And it's going to be the same thing for your Sony camera. It doesn't really matter which camera you have. Some have more features than others, but all the basic stuff is the same. All right, so that's a just a really valuable resource. In addition, if you have questions, you can go to the main website, Sony Alpha Lab right here. Go to the main website and click the contact us. And right here, you can contact me directly. You could always ask questions under the videos on YouTube as well, don't get me wrong, but you can contact me directly via email here. All right, so if you have a specific question and you really don't want the, co the question to be public, you can put it here and it'll like privately send me an email. So, you know what I mean? I, sometimes it might be a little embarrassing, you might think, if you don't know something. Don't worry about it. Just, you know, contact me here. It's not a big deal. And be sure to like this Facebook page. All right, guys, so here we are. I got the RX100 Mark VI, and I'm just gonna go over this camera real quick for those new to it. Basic overview here, you got all your different modes here. All right, when in doubt, guys, use auto. The camera's extremely intelligent. It can analyze the scene. It has scene recognition technology built in. So it'll analyze the scene and it'll figure out what mode to put the camera in in order to get you the best shot. And I'm telling you, this works like 90% of the time. So when in doubt, just put it in auto mode, okay? Now, I'm gonna go over the other dial features in a second, but I just wanna go over the camera real quickly. Just like I said, in case you just got this and you need to know how to use it, movie record button here. You have a couple other buttons here. The function button's very important. I'll show you that in a second. Menu button will get you into the unbelievably vast and deep menu system. Incredible amount of features in there. You got a dial here that turns, and there's a center button that you can also push. You have a garbage can here that can be custom programmed. That's why there's a C there. And you have the play button, which will, the play button will bring you into where your photos and video are. So that's a nice feature as well. And you can also click this tip pad. Even though this pad turns, you can also click it in four different directions. All right. So these are also buttons up, you know, up, down, left, right. So up on top here, you have the zoom. So this thing is the zoom. You just toggle it left and right and it works really good. It actually goes even, it goes a little slower in video and you can change the speed of it. Uh, in the menu. You have a shutter button here, you just press that and that's the shutter button to take the picture. You have the on off button here and of course if you'd slide this toggle over like so the flash pops up and you have a flash there. All right and it works really well. You can just push that back down and then on this side you have the viewfinder and you just basically do that and the viewfinder pops up and actually automatically turns the camera on as well which is a nice feature and now you can just push that back down in one shot it works really well. Now on this side, you also have the multi-port. Now this is where you charge the camera. You put the USB cable in here. You put the USB cable in there and you can charge the camera. It comes with like a plug and a cable. 
Now below that is the HDMI. It's a micro HDMI. These things are a little bit tight at first. Once you open them a few times, they loosen up. But this is a micro HDMI. So you can get a micro HDMI cable to a regular HDMI and plug this thing right into the TV and watch your videos or look at your photos on the television with that output, which is a really nice feature. You can also use that output to go to a higher end recording device and you can capture clean HDMI footage. Very powerful feature. And these things just snap closed like so. And then on the bottom, you have your tripod mount here. And then in here, you slide this to the left. See that little slider? You slide it to the left and that pops open. And here's your memory card. That just clicks in, okay? It goes, uh, you know, facing up like that. And then your battery, it's got this little blue thing here. You can just pop that over if you have like another battery. I highly recommend getting another battery um, just so you have that backup because the battery life on this camera is not very good. It only will last you about half a day, uh, depending on how much you're shooting. So you're gonna wanna get another camera. And it has an arrow on it, so the arrow goes left, like so. And it clicks in. I just popped the memory card out by accident. And then you, when you close it, it doesn't automatically lock, all right? But you just gotta slide that over, no big deal. The other thing I wanted to show you was the lens here it has a ring on it. You see this ring? You can turn that and when you're using the camera when it's on if you turn this it'll automatically go to like pre-designated focal lengths like the most popular ones like if you turn it it'll go from 24 it'll go to 35 and then it'll go to 55 and then it'll go to like 100 you know so play with that it's a really cool feature I like that you can also just use this toggle here and zoom that way as well but just so you know this does work and when you're in manual focus mode you can dial in the manual focus with this ring as well and that's a great feature if you're, you know, in the more advanced, you know, type shooting scenarios. All right, let me fire this thing up and I'm going to show you some of the menu system items that are critical. All right, guys, so let me power this thing up and I'm going to show you. Now, when you first turn it on, it's going to ask you to enter the date and time and stuff like that. So I already did that. But what I wanted to show you in particular is just I'm in full auto mode right now. OK, I'm in auto mode. So I want to show you how this camera works in auto mode and you got a bunch of different features. If you look on this dial here, it has a little on the top is a display button right here on the very top of the dial. If you hit that, you can change the display, all right? And it'll give you all different types of modes. This mode here is great because it shows you everything you could possibly want. It shows you the camera picture quality. It's in JPEG fine mode right now, which is what I recommend if you wanna just share the photos right off the camera. Okay, you can take the JPEGs and you can upload them to Facebook, share them via email or whatever. The other quality, of course, is raw quality, which is better, but you have to process those images in a program like Lightroom, for example. Now, other things that you see here, on the top left is the memory card that's telling you how many photos you can take, and then you also have your aspect ratio. It's currently set to 20 megapixel, which is the highest quality. It'll tell you your video settings here and things like that. Right here is telling you that the camera thinks it's on a tripod because I have it sitting on a table. So it recognizes that, and it's telling you it's an intelligent auto mode right now, which, like I was telling you earlier, it's extremely intelligent, scene recognition technology. Down here on the bottom, what you have here is a histogram. This tells you what the exposure is, at, what kind of exposure situation the camera is in. And right now, it's a pretty medium looking histogram. I'm looking at the lab scene. Above that, you have the angle, and you can turn that, and it'll show you if the camera is crooked. So if you're taking a picture of like the ocean or the horizon, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's level. You know what I mean? Otherwise it's gonna look, the image isn't gonna look as good, especially with water. If you look at an image with water and it's crooked, it looks like the water is gonna flow off the page, uh, off the screen or whatever, and that's really not the ideal situation. So you always wanna make sure that's level. Now here you have your autofocus mode. I recommend leaving it in autofocus A, and that automatically switches between continuous and single shot. So if you have a moving subject, the camera will automatically recognize that you have a moving subject and it'll switch the camera to autofocus continuous. If you have still subjects, it'll just leave it in still mode. So that's a great feature. Below that, you have focus area, all right? And then below that, you have AF on and its facial recognition technology is turned on. So that means if it sees a face in the scene, it'll automatically prioritize the face 
and that's an amazing feature, super powerful. Sometimes you might not want that though, so you need to know that that feature is on because if you, if you don't want it to focus on the faces and you want to focus on something else in the scene, you need to turn that off. And that's a common problem that people might have when there's faces in a scene and you don't want to focus on the faces. All right. And you got the zoom ring here. It's just telling you that it's zoom. And see how, you remember how I told you how it has the presets? You see that? You can just go like right to 35 or 50, for example, 70 and so forth. Really cool feature. Let me just change my display again by hitting the up side of this dial here. And I'll go back to that mode. And then you can focus like so. And if you want to touch to focus, you can just touch wherever you want. And there's a little gray box that pops up there. It's a little bit hard to see on the screen here, but there's a little gray box. And wherever you touch, it's going to move. See that? Really cool. And that works for video as well, guys. So when you're recording video, all you got to do is touch on the screen while you're recording and the focus will move to wherever you point on the screen. Amazing. Next thing I wanted to show you was this function button. See this function button right there? FN. Now when you hit that, that'll get you to most of the more important features. Now because I'm in, this changes depending on what mode you're in. I'm in auto mode right now, okay? So there's very limited features that you can change right now because I'm in full auto. If I put that in a different mode, like manual mode for example, all these boxes will be, you know, have information because you can change everything. In this mode, you're limited as to what you can change. So you can change your f drive mode, all right? Now drive mode, this is very important. Drive mode right now is set to single shot, but if you click that, you can scroll down. Now this is continuous shooting mode, all right? Now this is when you want the camera, if you just hold this button down, the camera's just gonna go ba 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 and it's gonna keep shooting. It's gonna fire like massive shots depending on what mode you have it set in. So you can change the speed. I have it, if you hit left or right on the dial here, you can change the speed of the rapid fire mode. Low, high, high is 24 frames per second. Incredible. A mid and then low will just slow it down. Then you have self timer. So if you want to get in front of the camera and take a picture with your family, self timer is a great feature. And again, you can go left and right on the dial to change that. And then you have C3, 10 seconds. You can change that. So it's going to take multiple photos at a self timer. And then you have bracket modes, but notice how these are all grayed out. That's because of the mode I'm in. So depending on what mode you're in, certain features on this camera will be grayed out. And that's very important to know because when you go into the menu system, some features you're not going to be able to change and you might wonder why. And it's because you're in full auto mode. All right, so again, when you hit the function menu, you, these are the limited options you have when in full auto mode. So you can change your image quality from JPEG to RAW, which you did not used to be able to do in full auto mode. So that's a nice feature that Sony added. So now you can use full auto and RAW mode. That, that's a really cool feature, but you again, you do have to process your photos, don't forget that. But you do get the power of the camera doing all the work for you, which is so nice. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you just don't have the time to figure out the settings, and especially if you're new to the camera. Like, I mean, it takes a long time to learn photography in general. It's, it, there's just a lot of concepts you need to learn. So auto mode, especially on these newer cameras, is so smart you're just better off using it in a lot of cases. Like if you're unsure, just switch it to auto mode. Now, check this out. I'm just gonna switch it to P mode, which is program mode. And if you hit the function button, now look at all those options. You see how there's all those options there now? So many to choose from. So it's a more advanced auto mode, basically, is what this mode is. It's still kind of full auto, but you can change a lot of different things like metering modes, and I have a video dedicated on metering mode. So if you want to know exactly what that is, check out that how to thing that I showed you a minute ago on my YouTube channel, and you can watch the detailed video on metering modes. You can also watch the focus video. Okay. It'll go over all the focus modes, what they do, why to use which one and how to use each one in that other video in depth. Okay. So be sure to check out that other video. Same thing with drive modes. I go into that in another video that I showed you in the how-to area a second ago, and it'll really break it down in great detail, okay? Now this is flash exposure compensation. Sometimes the flash might be too bright or it might be too dim. This is where you would change that. You can raise and lower the flash power. White balance. White balance is basically how the camera decides to 
interpret the color of the scene, okay? So auto white balance for the most part works great. Sometimes it doesn't work very good though, so you can change it. You can go into white balance and change it to all these different modes, and you can dial these modes in as well. Notice how there's that little arrow there. If you go to the right, you could then dial it in if you want to. It's just unbelievably powerful, all right? So just hit the menu button to go back. And then here, there's a couple defaults built in. And you got auto white balance underwater. Now underwater, if you're using this in the underwater housing, you're gonna wanna use this mode. Kelvin, this is great for in a situation like I'm in right now where I'm in the lab. I could actually dial in the temperature to exactly what the lights are. So if I go to the right, I can dial it in. And I already did that. The lab is calibrated to 3200K. Okay, so this is the proper white balance for the lab scene. And then you could also program white balances. So if you have given scenarios, like for example, the lab scene here, you can then just program this to that, and then you can just go to one, two, or three, depending on the scene. And then you can set it custom here. If you wanna custom set your white balance in a given scene, you can just shoot a gray card. You can set it to this, and then you can see how it says press the center button. And it's basically capturing the center of the scene, and it actually just ca it just automatically calibrated the scene to 2500K. But that's because I was shooting at all these crazy colors. I wasn't shooting at a gray card. If I was shooting at a gray card, it would have came up as 3200K. Just so you know. All right, so that's the function button, guys. And like I said, depending on the menu, you know, depending on the mode you're in, the function menu is going to change. Okay. So let me just show you what scene mode is. Scene mode is another option that I highly recommend you check out if you're newer to, to this uh, camera system, newer for, to photography. So basically you can change your scene mode. So let me just hit the function button. And if you go over here to the right, notice right there you have your scene. So you can select your scene. Now it gives you a nice description. When you click that button, it tells you what it does. It'll blur the background out for portrait mode and it'll produce a soft skin tone. And then if you scroll, you can change your mode. Sports mode, you're shooting sports, go into scene selection, switch to sports mode. The camera will do all the work for you. It'll change the shutter speed, make sure it's fast enough, and so forth. It'll change the drive mode to fast, so it'll rapid fire. It'll do all that type of stuff for you. Macro mode, again, if you're shooting flowers, stuff like that, close up photography is macro. Landscape photography, it'll emphasize the greens, give you nice vivid colors, extra sharpness, great feature, sunset mode. Like I said, these scene modes are amazing. A night scene without a tripod, so this is the option if you're trying to take a shot like that and you don't have a tripod, switch it to that mode and the camera will do the work for you. Night portrait, I mean, it's just incredible. It does a really good job. It's an extremely smart anti-motion blur. It's got a lot of different modes here. Pet photography mode, food photography mode, fireworks mode. I mean, how cool is that? You want gorgeous fireworks? Well, you could switch it if you don't know how to do it because you obviously can do this with manual. If you put the camera in full manual and you dial in the settings, you can do this as well. But the camera is so smart, it'll actually take multiple photos, combine them to give you an amazing result. So you don't have to know what you're doing in order to get killer results with this camera. That's what I'm trying to show you with this video, guys. This is specifically for those new to photography, new to an awesome camera like this, the RX100 Mark VI. And this is just another feature, high sensitivity. This is when you're in extremely low light, okay? So that's scene mode. Uh, again, this is what, well, between auto mode and scene mode, you should be all set for the most part if you're like a beginner and you're just trying to get good shots. But I'm gonna go into a couple more modes here. So panorama mode. This mode is if you're taking a panoramic photo. So how this works is, notice how it says press the shutter button and move in the direction of the arrow, and you see the arrow. You can change that if you want. You can change the way that the panoramic mode works, and you can also change the size of the panoramic in the menu. You could make it like really thin and really wide, or you can make it a little bit fatter and less wide. But basically you just go like this, you hit the shutter button, and then as you're shooting, you turn the camera and it'll give you that pano effect and it'll turn it into a panoramic photograph and save it to the memory card for you. So that's what that mode is for. High frame rate mode. 
Now this mode is for the slow motion photography. I have a whole video on this in the how to area and it'll show you every single feature of the high frame rate mode and how exactly to use it. So check out that video if you wanna use slow motion video. Be sure to check that video out. I'm gonna link all these videos below as well. Then you have movie mode. And again, I have another video on movie mode. It'll show you all the different features of movie mode and how to use it. Memory recall. This is where you can set the camera up for specific settings and then you can simply just go to whatever memory recall mode you want and it'll automatically recall those settings. So you can basically set the camera up exactly how you want it, you know, and you can change all these settings. All right, and it'll remember that and then you can just recall it at any time so you don't have to go in there and change the camera settings you know for a particular scene you know like if you use this camera for like a couple different things but one particular thing you need to change all the settings for well this is where you want to use memory recall so normally you use the camera in auto or whatever but in one scenario you have to have like you know all these things enabled all the different features set specific that's what this feature is for memory recall okay and then you got manual this is for more advanced shooting. Manual mode allows you to change everything manually. You can change the shutter speed, you can change the aperture, and you can change the ISO all independently. It's full manual, okay? So you gotta know what you're doing when you're using this mode, but it gives you the most power as well because it's full manual. Shutter priority is basically where you can just dial in the shutter speed. You see if I turn the dial, I'm changing the shutter speed. So this is good if you specifically want slower or faster shutters, okay? It's really good for sports and things like that. Scene mode would be a better way to go and just put it in sports mode if you're newer to the camera. But if you're more advanced and you're looking for the best quality possible, shutter priority or manual mode would be the way to go. And then you got aperture priority. Now this one will change the aperture for you. As you turn the dial, you see, that's the difference between shutter and aperture and then you got program mode and you got full auto mode. All right, one other thing I wanted to show you was the menu. If you hit the menu button here, you have an extremely in-depth menu. You got one, two, global, play, toolbox, and favorites. So in the menu here, the menu system here, you can choose your different qualities when it comes to photos, and here's the panoramic options, remember? But you gotta be in panoramic mode. See how these are grayed out? This is what I wanted to show you. Certain features are grayed out depending on what mode you're in. And it's a very important concept to understand when it comes to the Sony cameras, okay? So because I'm in full auto mode, I'm very limited to my features in here. But if you scroll to the right, you can see all the different features. Intelligent auto, you can change the auto mode. You see that? You can change it to superior auto or intelligent auto. It's up to you. They're both amazing. They have different characteristics per se, but they both work really good. And then you got drive mode, you got bracket settings, memory recall, you can go in there and change that. Focus mode, pre-AF. Like I said, I have another video that explains all the autofocus features and in depth, all right? So check that out, I'm gonna link it below. Metering modes, notice how all this stuff's grayed out. It's all grayed out because I'm in full auto. But you could see just how deep this menu is. It's nine out of 12 pages. So it's create. I have another video on creative style, picture effect, and picture profiles. All right, so just go to that how-to area and you can find all about this stuff in depth, in detail, okay? Soft skin, this is an awesome feature. If you're taking portraits and stuff and you don't feel like doing editing, turn this on and it'll make people look more pretty. It'll soften the skin, it'll smooth things up, it sharpens the eyes a little bit also, it seems like. So this is a great feature for portraits in particular if you just want a great result right off the camera. Obviously, if you're gonna go into Photoshop and do editing, you wanna leave this off, but if you don't wanna do that, leave that, put that on. Face rec registration and things like that. high frame rate settings. I have another video specifically on high frame rate mode, so check that video out if you want to shoot in slow motion. You got quality dual record. It's another feature there. You can change the quality of, if you're recording both RAW and JPEG, you can make the JPEG quality whatever you want here. Right now it's set to fine at default. File format for video. All right, now this is important for video. Depending on what you want to do with video, you're gonna to wanna to use, and I would recommend using either this one, what I have it currently set to, which is what you need to have it set to for slow motion and stuff, 
and then this is the 4k option so if you want 4k quality you're gonna have to select that there all right once you select it then you can go down to record setting and dial in how you're going to actually record that 4k footage and these are the different options for that all right so you have 100 megabits per second which is the highest quality bit rate but you could lower that quality if you want to get more record time you can lower that bit rate to 60 and that'll get you much more record time and then depending on your workflow you might want to use 24p as opposed to 30p that's up to you i usually shoot 24p because i'm using an older camera the camera i'm recording with right now is a sony nex 6 which is much older and it only allows for 24p it doesn't even have 30 so i usually use 24p myself but these days most people seem to be using 30p and again you have all these different options af drive speed tracking sensitivity so you can change the sensitivity of the tracking when shooting in continuous autofocus mode and with video in particular the sensitivity changes how quick the focus moves from one subject to another so if you have the tracking sensitivity set to high and the AF drive speed set to high, the focus will switch more quickly and it'll more rapidly switch from one subject to another. Like if you're touching the screen to change the focus, it'll switch quicker if you have these modes set to a higher sensitivity and a higher speed. So that's an important feature. And again, there's just so many features in this camera. You got steady shot standard. You can change that to active. See that? But because, again, I'm in full auto, these are grayed out. Intelligent active would be a great option if you're looking for the, you know, the, the smoothest possible footage. Active basically combines optical steady shot, which is what the lens does, and sensor stabilization. But it's not really a real sensor stabilization, though. It's digital. So, you know, you're getting a digital stabilization. It does work amazing, though, but it's not the same as sensor stabilization. All right? So let me just go back into the menu here. I just want to show you a couple more things real quick. Menu. All right, so now if I keep scrolling to the right, you've got different types of shutters. You can change it. Steady shot, you can turn that on and off. Zoom setting, zoom speed. See that? It's set to normal. You can change that. Zoom function ring. So you can turn the zoom speed to fast if you want to zoom in and out faster when you're recording video. That's a really nice feature. Default, I like the slower speed myself, but if you want a faster zoom, you can change that. You have another bunch of features here, more zebra settings, this advanced stuff for video, grid line. You can put grids on the screen, so it'll help you frame your image and stuff like that. It's off by default, but you can turn it on. And then you have your custom features. This is where you can program the custom keys. You remember how I said this garbage can has a C next to it because you can custom program it. This is where you would go in to do that and then the function menu you can also program the function menu to what you want and this is where you can turn touch to focus off so if you keep hitting the screen and it's changing the focus point on you and it's driving you crazy and you hate that go in here and turn it off touch shoot set touch focus you can turn that off right there and then you won't have to worry about when you touch the screen the focus changing okay i could i know a lot of people that are probably going to drive crazy so you can turn it off right here okay so it's on the second menu, 9 of 10. Turn that feature off. That's why that feature is turned off on the A7 III by default, I think, because when you touch the screen, it changes the focus point, and that just pisses off professionals. They want their focus point where they have it set. They don't want it to necessarily change willy-nilly. But, you know, on a camera like this, you're more likely going to want that touch feature. So that's where that is. And the movie button, this record button here, on the right, you can actually make it so it doesn't always work. You can turn it off if you want, so it's a little bit harder to start recording a video because you can actually hit that by accident, for example. And then you can turn your audio signals off if you want the camera to be quiet. There's, there's just so many features on this thing. And then if you go into network mode or you know global mode because it looks like a globe, you have all these other features, Wi-Fi settings, airplane mode, control with smartphone, view on TV, send to computer, Bluetooth settings. You can edit the device name, reset network settings. Then you got playback here. You can go in there. It's got three different pages, all different features. You can customize the camera. So it gives you a different view when you're in play mode. And then in here you have monitor brightness. I just wanted to show you this really quick because if you click on that, you can change it to sunny weather. See that feature? This is what you need to change it to if you're in the sun. 
if you want to use the LCD screen. It has this built-in viewfinder, so you don't really need this feature necessarily. But if you don't want to use the built-in viewfinder and you need to see the screen in bright conditions, change it to sunny weather mode, okay? Of course, that's going to kill the battery much faster because it's, you know, making the screen much brighter. But it's a really great feature and I really think, I just think you needed to be aware of that because a lot of times in bright light, the screen is just too dim and that's a way to make it brighter. And you got all these other features, mode dial and stuff like that. If you guys have any specific questions, please just ask me below. This video will just be forever if I go through all these settings. Here's format, so you can format the memory card, okay? It's in the toolbox area. You gotta format the card, that's pretty important. Date and time setup. And let's see what else we got here that I need to tell you about. Oh, favorites mode, see the star there? You can actually set up whatever you want in this favorites mode. This is an awesome feature. If there's a feat, like you saw how deep the menu system is. There's insane. It's so many pages deep. So this is where you add the features that matter to you. All right. So if I want to add a feature here, you just go to the right. See how it's page two of two? And that's one of two. So these are, these are the actual favorites I have programmed. But if you go to page two of two, you can add an item. All right. So right here, here we go. Add an item. So now you can just scroll through and you got pages and pages and pages. You can just scroll through and add the item that applies to you. In this case, let's say focus area. I want to change my focus area. And then it says, do you want to add it here? I'm going to add it here in my menu one. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll add it there. All right, perfect. All right, so now let me just go back to the menu. And now if I go back to page one, whoops, I'm going to hit the left to go back one. See how I have focus area now? It's grayed out though because I'm in full auto mode. Let me change it to a different mode. Change it to aperture priority mode and I'm gonna hit menu, focus area. Now it's not grayed out. Now I could select my focus area. And I have a video about the all the different focus areas, guys. So check that out in the how to Sony video section on my channel. And it'll go over all these features in detail. But you see, how powerful this my menu area is you can add anything you can add like you know format so you can switch from jpeg to raw or whatever but the fastest way to change settings is just hit the function menu that function button remember hit that function button boom here's everything you need metering mode iso exposure compensation so you can basically change the brightness of the image that you're taking with exposure comp focus area the mode is right there focus mode Drive mode, it's all here in the function menu. So that's, the function menu is the fastest way to change the most critical settings. And you can change what's in the function menu. When we were going through the menu a minute ago, I showed you saw how you can change the function menu. You can actually custom program this with what you want, all right? But I just wanted to make you aware of that. So that is pretty much it, guys. So basically, I went over everything you needed to know when shooting with the RX100 Mark VI. If you have any questions, again, please just ask below in the comments area, contact me on the website via the contact form. You know, if you don't want to leave a comment below the video, I totally understand that. So just contact me directly through the website. You can email me at sonyalphalab.com. Please be sure to like me on Facebook and also thumbs up the video if you like the video. It really helps a lot. I really appreciate that. Be sure to check out my latest video, which is the A7 III versus the Sony RX100 Mark VI, so you can see the difference between a one-inch sensor and a full-frame sensor. Obviously, they're much different, but you know each camera has its purpose. You can put this one in your pocket. All right, guys, I will catch up with you next time. Please have a great day, and thanks again for watching.